you know, just hear, it's the lyricism of it as well. I mean, people talk and I just love that. So, yeah, yeah I mean, fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say, yeah. thank you so much, Fran. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, Maggie, would you yeah. like to go next? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think, well, Lynn's my soul sister because um, I've also lived in Broadstairs um, all my life. So, um, and also uh, it was interesting you said, Lynn, that you love to have something in your hands and I'm exactly the same. I've always got to have something in my hands. I'm always making something. Yeah. And I think that's come really from uh, my maternal grandmother who was a great knitter and, and stitcher. My mother's a stitcher. So I sort of, I've never known a time when my family haven't been doing something creative really. So uh, yeah. but I think that was sort of born into me when I was very, very young, but um, I suppose I call myself um, a patchwork and quilter. That was my first sort of joy that I discovered um, when I was sort of, when I just had my children and I was, I was at home quite a lot, uh, but it's sort of gone on from there really. So um, I've, I've sort of like Lynn tried loads and loads of different crafts and hobbies and what have you. Um, and we, a roundabout route and another long story, which I won't go into, but I ended up doing um, a fine art degree in my late forties with a view to teaching, but the, I decided by the time I finished the degree, which was um, as a mature student over six years, I didn't even fancy doing the teaching by that stage. So I gave that idea up and just carried on working in a school as an administrator. But um, but it gave me such, it gave me a lot of confidence doing the degree. And it also opened my eyes to a lot of different types of art and artwork and practices. And it, it kind of, it just opened so many doors. And whilst I was doing my dissertation, I just happened to go to the Turner and to see an exhibition over there. And in one of the other breakout rooms, there was this wonderful group knitting with fabric, strips of mm -hmm. torn up duvets. And I, I opened the door, which I probably shouldn't have gone in actually, but I did go in because I was feeling quite brave. And this wonderful group of people were in there, um, all do, do, doing this knitting. And I said, well, can I join in? Because this looks really just up my street and never looked back really. So that was how I got into the studio group. And my goodness, it's opened so many doors to me. I cannot yeah. believe that that just yeah. chance, going over there, that chance afternoon, um it's just been brilliant because i met lynn and all the studio group we did the three graces which was a huge um piece that was amazing the three graces the turner and it was just such a fabulous experience yeah um, what, what was it was it was it textile based what, what was the three graces it was um we as a studio group we commissioned an artist to work with us or we worked with him i don't know which way we would say it but um oh. He came, he came down from Nottingham and um, he, desired, he created a piece of artwork that needed a huge amount of labour, of um, creative labour to, to, re to realise it. So we filled the Sunday gallery downstairs with three large, enormous pieces. They were huge. I, it, I look back now and I just can't believe we did it. You know, it was just massive. If you Google the images, um, the three graces at the Turner, you'll see what massive pieces. It involved all sorts of arts and crafts from um, applique, um, making huge um, polystyrene balls and we did all sorts of things it was just such a brilliant thing beading yeah. um, I can't tell you there's so many different aspects so many things and, like knitting. and knitting and knitting yes definitely and, and knitting. Knitting. <laughs> I get you're hot on the knitting Lynn I get we, that uh, I, can't anyway, so that was... <laughs> I can't remember learning I, it's just always been there yeah it was just brilliant so and also you know meeting all these lovely new people and, and that that's been brilliant but as i say i've, I've always lived in broadstairs as well so broadstairs is very close to my heart and um but i always liked uh, stone bay which is the next bay along from viking bay where lynn spent a lot of time but stone bay is like my sort of uh, go-to place when I'm really um, when I'm happy when I'm sad if I want to, when I wanted to exhibit a piece of artwork for my degree I took it all down to the beach and put it on the beach and photographed it down there I had a dog wing on my artwork and all sorts of things it's been such a brilliant place and then lots of lovely memories from Stone Bay so and also I feel I've connected more to this area perhaps this year in lockdown because um, another long story but I started running um, exactly this time last year and it has been my absolute saviour through lockdown so I've mm. run I would say at least three times a week past beaches and really can reconnect with the coastline again because it's just and I have to say I do say to a lot of people I've traveled all over the world but just the Broadstairs bays are beautiful and I've sat on so many bays but still would come back to Broadstairs and say it's my favorite place to be so um yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's my sort of yeah. my my hobby background and my home background <laughs> in yeah. a nutshell. So it's that kind of thing, you know, people talk about, I don't know, like if they have spirit animals, but there's spiritual places for people, isn't mm. there? There's spiritual places, mm. kind of pilgrimage, mm. where you kind of, 
embed yourself or ground yourself that kind of thing that become part of and especially with with things like this like lockdown mm. and things where you um where you're reconnecting with them because i think for me as well a lot of like having having your territory restricted highly restricted so so many like places i didn't i was not aware of and because you have to find more walks and when you've done one about 50 mm. times you're like god I've, I've got to find there has to be another place I've walked this road so many times, you know, and then I just, I found that it actually, I actually started thinking, you know what, I think it's more than just me walking. I think it's part of my practice. I think it became like, you know, the physical embodiment where you physically connect and you're moving through that space, you know what I mean? Because I think, um, I remember Sarah, when we went through Botany Bay, I'm fascinated, but the, the very idea that with the tides and that the way that changes your movement, you know, whether you can go down to the beach, whether you can't, and that kind of, that, yeah. that rhythm of of working or moving into land or out of it mm. in marine space through just even just the tidal movements is, is, is just something that is just really quite beautiful really that impact and movement um, well it was interesting because this week um doing this has prompt prompted me to think about the walk again because um i'd never actually walked along the shoreline when the tide was out so this week my husband and i went to ramsgate and we walked from ramsgate all the way around the shore right yeah. up to botany bay which was a fabulous walk and i've never done that before and you know all these years i've been here i've never actually done that walk when the tide was out yeah. it just amazes me that i can find new things around locally even mm. now after you know such a long time being down here so one of the places i discovered which is is, is not on the beach Mockets Wood. Oh yes, yeah. Well, strange I mean, enough, yesterday we did. Years, we sorry. It's been years. I mean, since I was a child, yeah. since I've been there, and to discover it again was amazing. Yeah, we walked through Broadstairs and um, St Peter's Graveyard out to, yes. and then to Botany, and then we did this walk again yesterday. So, mm. I'm still discovering new places, and I 